today wasn't a great day. We lost, and <laughs> I'm going through the five stages of grief, if not ten. <laughs> yeah. I've made up some new stages. <laughs> Yeah, how's it going, everyone? You know how I normally take notes, Sarah, uh, for the video, for our video that we record? My notes today say, we lost. That's it. <laughs> I mean, what else is there to say, really? <laughs> yeah, so that's what we're going to talk about. Timestamps down below, because we're going to touch on the Arsenal game and the Chelsea game at the very end. So if you want to go straight to that, <laughs> possibly. Um, but I will say. Although I am sad Gotham lost because we were rooting for Gotham, I'm actually really pumped for the Washington Spirit fans and the team. They had a sold out crowd at Audi Field. The The crowd was hyped. It, I love to see such a hyped crowd. And they really came out for the fan. They really came out for the players. So I was really excited to see that the Washington Spirit players and fans got such a good game and such a good, I mean, such a fun atmosphere. But I mean, we're just going to go quickly over the game because, you know, since we did lose, because going into this game, like I said, sold out crowd, it was at Audi Field. So you think Gotham kind of almost is at the disadvantage. They're the kind of the underdogs, even with all their superstars on their roster. They are still, I think, the underdogs going into this matchup throughout the season. Washington Spirit is 2-0 and against Gotham, so they've had two wins uh, and Gotham has lost twice against Spirit. So realistically, Gotham was definitely the underdog going into this match, if you look at it that way. But some would say, you know, when they beat Gotham, they did have Croy Bethune. Uh, so maybe things were different. But Washington Spirit really does have Gotham's number. And also, this match kind of had it all. It had a red card. It had a penalty, sh a PK. It wouldn't even mention the PK shootout. I mean, that's how crazy it was. It had a PK shootout. Was that even considered a PK shootout, technically? Well, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. But the first half of the game, I thought was pretty, I don't want to say equally matched, but both teams had opportunities. You know, the momentum wasn't skewed heavily one way or the other. I would say, actually, I would say Washington Spirit maybe had more chances. It was pretty evenly matched in the first half. First half scoreless. Again, like we've done had a lot of these scoreless halves. Then coming out of the first half, uh, being scoreless, I mean, Gotham struck first in the 56th minute. Esther had a beautiful header, like a beautiful header. And, you know, she's not the tallest person on the field, but with her feet, with her head, she does it all right in the corner. And not that I thought that was it, but I said, oh, okay, okay, th this is the Gotham we know. This is the Gotham we love. We're winning. Yes, I was feeling so good about it. And up until the end, I was feeling really good about it. <laughs> At the very end, it was pretty touch and go for Gotham. And then Washington Spirit struck. 90th plus second minute um, from a free kick right in the corner. It was Hal Hirschfeld. And uh, th th that's your stomach drops, Sarah. When you see that, it's so close to the end. Your stomach drops. Something definitely did drop because I was in the bathroom oh, at the dear, time. Oh, dear. <laughs> and, oh, dear. And let me tell you. Because of that, I'm never going to the bathroom during a game again. Oh, so you so you think you, you had bad... Uh, Maybe it's bad luck that I used the bathroom at the time. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm very superstitious when it comes to stuff yeah. like that. So at that moment, I, at the momentum completely shifted to the Washington spirit. Completely. Um, because they're at home. They have the crowd on their side. The ball was continuously on their side. But I thought, if anyone could still win this game, it's going to be Gotham. Um... Going to two, uh, oh, I'm calling it overtime. I know it's not called overtime, but I'm calling it overtime. Two halves of overtime. Something really bad happened because, <laughs> <laughs> um, really, because the time you don't want to lose a player, uh, we lost a player because Re Bernina fouled and it caused her to get a yellow, which caused her to be, she was already on a yellow, which meant a red card, which meant they were going to be down a player. Not just that, if they made it to the finals, she was going to be out of the final game too. So this was really unfortunate because I don't think it was even necessary. If you look at where the ball was, she, Tr it, Tr Trinity had the ball, so it was a foul on Trinity. There was another Gotham player. Um, right behind her. So I don't think it was even necessary. Now, maybe the maybe the ref was already on the Washington Spirit side. So <laughs> <laughs> it changed the course of the game, even though sometimes when the, the team goes down a player, sometimes it really hypes them up. So and isn't this the ref that gave Casey Stoney the red card? I'm almost positive it is. Yeah, he's red card happy. <laughs> he loves to bring out those reds. 
Yeah, he loves these red cards. And then Trinity Rodman and Emily Sonic kind of got in a little fight. I'm going to read a comment because they kind of got in a little scrum. Uh, So, but I would say the second overtime, the second half, it was pretty much all Washington spirit. I mean, a few good chances. They really had control of the ball a lot. And not that I thought it was a matter of time. I just thought uh, this is Washington Spirit's game to lose. I, I really thought that. But during the overtime, neither team scored, which was good to see, especially with Gotham being one player down and the momentum in the Washington Spirit favor. Neither team scored. PK shootout. I thought we had the advantage going to the PK shootout, you know, and Katrin has been historically pretty good on PK shootouts. You know, we have a lot of uh, players on the Gotham team that are good at PK shootout. But boy, was I wrong because (laughs) um, it was it was horrendous. Yeah, the problem was even if Gotham, even if and Katrin would have saved even one of those shots, the the Gotham players, um, which sucks so bad, so bad because Esther was the first one up. Esther had such a good game. She scored a goal. She had a really good game and then go up there on a PK and have Aubrey Kingsbury save the PK. Um, Esther had a great game. It had a good game. And then, you know, she didn't make her PK. Then um, Jenna Nicewanger and McCall Zerboni, all three PKs, the same spot every time uh, Aubrey Kingsbury, which Sarah kept calling Aubrey Plaza. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> three up, and she and she saved all three. But they were not very good uh, PKs. I see a comment right here that says, it says, those penalties were really bad from Gotham. Great goalkeeping during the game from both sides, though. And then someone so said, uh, those PKs by Gotham were dreadful. All the same spot. What a crap way to end an awesome season. Yeah, that is kind of a crappy way to end an awesome season. Uh, it's like, it's almost like they didn't think they were ever going to go to PKs and they didn't practice them. Or yeah. I don't know. They, they were just really bad. On the opposite side, the three up, three down from um, Washington Spirit. Three three good, solid PKs. Uh, the first one was almost saved by Ashley. Ha- or Ashley Hatches was almost saved. She got a hand on it. But that was pretty much it. They had Three quality uh, goal kicks in Gotham's were just not good. Um, but it sucks to, you know, end a season like that. And that's it. They're the winners. They're, you know, Washington is the rightful winners. I was definitely rooting for Gotham this game. But, I mean, Washington Spirit absolutely deserved to win this game. Sorry, Gotham. Just based on the PKs at the end. Because those are some of the wildest PKs can we even call them those? Can we Can we even call them that? Um, no, I'm just kidding. But um, I don't want to be mean to my team. But what the hell was that? <laughs> love you guys still. No, still love you though. And to give credit to Aubrey Kingsbury as much, or yeah, Aubrey Kingsbury, as much as they, those weren't the best PK, she still saved them. She did her job, but they just no power, all the same spot. It was pretty bad. And, and then people are saying, you know, Washington won fair and square. They were, they were the better team. But some of the coaching decisions were a little bit not the best. I see a comment here. It says, We should not have taken out Lavelle or Ryan at the end. We immediately started playing catch up without them. Game went downhill. Love the, love the bats, though. Great season. Or love you bats. Great season. Yeah, a lot of people said taking out Rose in that s- scenario was, w- was a mistake because she brings so much in that situation. Uh... And someone goes, that was the worst set of PKs I've ever seen. I've seen, actually seen worse. But <laughs> did y'all did y'all not practice those this the season? Okay. And then someone goes, yes, he took out the players most likely to score them. Why wasn't Williams first in the shootout? Oh, that's an interesting question. Why wasn't uh, William? And then someone goes, yes, that's true. Rose should have stayed in when she came out. And the team changed for the worse. They were already playing catch up after Washington got momentum. Um... Yeah, so, but I think Washington was a bit better team. I think they were fiery. They were at home. And then people are talking about the Trinity and Sonnet fight. Like, you know, whatever, you know, not fight. But, and then someone goes, what was the fight about? And then someone kind of lip read and they said, at one point, she said, don't do that. And then someone goes, and Trin responded with an exasperated, but Sonnet. <laughs> and then Sonnet saying something like, you do that every time to Trin. And then Sonnet goes, I don't know. And then Trin says, Sonnet. <laughs> so there, there was a little scrum. There was a little feistiness. Yeah, no, it's like sisters. They play the national team. They know each other pretty well. It's like sisters, you know. 
But nothing tops the moment where Esther was popped off on the ref and literally just yelled at him <laughs> and went crazy <laughs> in his face. That was kind of, that was a highlight for me. Yeah, Sarah made me rewind the the TV to, to show me that because she was so worked up about it. Sarah and Esther were both worked up about it. And you didn't even see the full thing about it. I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to go watch it back because yeah. it was iconic. Um, And then someone said, Sad about the outcome, but what an amazing game. They played amazing, especially missing a player. And then someone goes, yeah, the dynamic changed when Rose left the pitch. So was that the, the managerial decision that was kind of questionable? Should Rose have left at that moment? Um, it hurts, but love this team. What a great season to experience. We'll be back next year. Yep, yeah, exactly. And you still tried best. You, you, you tried your best. Still proud of you. Absolutely. Oh, I'm actually going to take my vote back for uh, Juan Carlos for Coach of the Year. Yeah. So uh, I give it to Seb. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Because someone says tough end of the season, bad calls on the subs. So talking about Juan Carlos sitting back on defense and not going for a second goal. Terrible PK shots. Lots to learn from this and improve. Let's go to hard next season. Okay. So sad. Tomorrow's the big game against KC and Orlando. I think I think we want to. Let's go Orlando. Yeah. I think I won an Orlando in the final. So Orlando versus uh, Washington with Orlando to win the final. I want Orlando to annihilate, <laughs> annihilate Washington spirit. Yeah, that would be fun. That would be fun. But what did everyone think? But I'm so excited for Washington, the, the fans, everyone there. You know, they played a great game. Also, um, NWSL semis, but going over to the WSL season, um, another big giant win. For Arsenal, I mean, Renee Sluggers is what she is doing with this team. I mean, the confidence is out of control. Uh, three nil, three nil against uh, Tottenham. Just they have their confidence. It's so exciting to see what they can do. Can they still win league? Oh, maybe, maybe not. But just giving them this confidence. Um, because even this game, Alessio Russo, the second minute in, banger. I mean, second minute in, that's how much confidence they have going into these games. Then in the, I think, 22nd minute, Frida Monum, you know, Tottenham, th their back line, their defense wasn't great. And Tottenham, to be fair, didn't play great. But sometimes Arsenal, when they're playing teams that aren't great, actually sometimes have struggled in the past with teams you wouldn't think they would. But goal from Frida Monum. I, mean, I don't think the Tottenham goalie had any chance at that. Um, and Frida Monum looked like she was all business after she scored it. And then in the 66th minute, Stina Blackstinius, her and Frida Monum have been scoring goals like crazy lately. Um, and then Mariona's assist on that was just like butter. I mean, look at Ooh, smooth like butter. Mm -hmm. Mariona, Mariona can do anything she wants with her feet. Like, she, she can do anything. And it's exciting to see them she should insure those. Yeah. <laughs> Are they going to say do magic? Well, that too. Uh, close up magic. Close up foot magic. Yeah. Watch me make this soccer ball disappear. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> um, Tottenham did not play great. Their defense looked shaky. Uh, but that doesn't mean that Arsenal didn't still play, you know, good as well people are still talking about Renee we talked about it last time people want to see Renee as the uh permanent head coach however people put it in our comment section and I didn't find an article about it maybe I'll put one on the screen Renee has said apparently she doesn't necessarily want the job now she might be saying that because she doesn't want them to think she wants it and that if she doesn't get it she's gonna leave the club you get what I'm saying by that yeah um, or she might not be saying that because she truthfully doesn't want it uh, because she'd rather just be an assistant or she actually wants it, but just wants to say that because she doesn't want to seem disappointed if she weren't to get it or she really just doesn't want the job. I don't know. No one quite knows except for her, but she says she doesn't necessarily want the job. But so many people are just like, Renee, we need you. It's not like Renee, hire Renee. It's like we literally need Renee. Um, it's a scary job, though. Yeah, it is. It, a lot of pressure. Um, and I saw comments like this. Give Renee the job full time. I genuinely don't think anyone will disagree. She's been exceptional. And someone says, I made a petition to keep her as a head coach. Let me know if you want to sign. <laughs> yeah, there's petitions going out for her. Um, and then someone goes, 12 goals in three games. None conceded. Keep her. I mean, nothing. Th th if that's not convincing enough, I don't know what would be. 
North London is red. Leah Williamson slowly getting back to her best. Yeah, we're going to do a video about Leah Williamson in the next couple of videos, but she's, she's, I don't want to say back, but she, she, she's been getting better and better every game, more confidence. Um, maybe Renee's part of that. Um, I believe today was her 150th, 150th appearance for, uh, Arsenal. So that was exciting to see, but you know, every, every comment is how about we stop looking for a new coach? Just food for thought. Five games won in a draw since Renee arrived. The change in the team is noticeable. A spectacular match having possession from the beginning. Having possession from the match from the beginning. Let's go Arsenal. So people are excited. I mean, she might not want the job, but maybe it's one of those things. You know, sometimes when in government, it's like, I know you don't want the job, but the, the government needs yeah. you. The job, but the, the people need you, whether or not you want it or not. And now you think, okay, are they going to win league? Maybe, maybe not. Um, because... Uh, we're going to talk very briefly about this uh, Manchester City and Chelsea game because Manchester City and Chelsea are the two teams. They're the, at this point, I honestly think Brighton was in there for a bit. Maybe Man United was in there for a bit. But Chelsea and Man City are the only team, two teams at this point are going to beat Arsenal if they're going to. And they had a big game today, Chelsea versus Man City. And this was going to be a big, big game. But, I mean, Chelsea... who? Even when Chelsea's not playing amazing, who's going to beat Chelsea? Like, that's what people keep saying. Chelsea won 2-0, two late goals against Man City. Um, they're 1-2 and two in the rankings. And if you think, if you're from Arsenal's perspective, I believe you would want Man City to beat Chelsea because that would give you as Arsenal a better chance. You want anyone who can to beat Chelsea. Does that make sense? You want anyone who can beat Chelsea to beat Chelsea. And Man City would be one of those teams. Unfortunately, today, Man City was not successful. But they have a lot going on over there. Gareth Taylor has been the coach for quite a few seasons. I don't even know how many. But people are now questioning, you know, is it time for Gareth out? Also, there's problems with Chloe Kelly over there that I saw a report that she might leave during maybe the, the Christmas break. I don't know. She's not happy there. Lauren Hemp is injured. Viv is injured now. We haven't even talked about her. She's having another or she had another surgery. There is a lot of issues over at Man City. They started out so hot. Um, but this game, Chelsea really showed why they are the best uh, in this game. I don't think you've seen this, Sarah. I'm going to show you this, and I want your I want your reaction to this. Um, Myra Ramirez, I believe, in the 73rd minute, um, it was still nil nil. She said, "You know, we're ready to score now. We're going to score." So I'm going to show you what she did. <laughs> oh, bodied! Oh my gosh, that was that was beautiful. I I, I don't know if I saw this as a comment. She had a fun celebration, a fun um, Sally. A goal, Sally. I saw this as someone commented. She, del I don't even know who that was, that defender. She deleted her defender. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. I'm done with you. Definitely. God, I love that. Just a, just a good shoulder check. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm done with that defender. Push her over. Um, and she scored. She, she looked great. She scored. And then just three minutes later, I think girl right and scored oh. beautiful both those finishes the Myra Ramirez finished one-on-one -on -one, scored and then Guru's Guru's uh shot right in the corner two beautiful shots yeah that was so good oh that was an assist by Lucy Bronze and I didn't realize this I don't follow Chelsea too co closely but people were kind of giving guff to Lucy Bronze saying like why is she starting she's her time has passed what do you okay Sarah number one Lucy Bronze fan what do you think about that First of all, let me just clean my job off the floor because <laughs> what? Um, don't be dogging Lucy because she's mother freaking Lucy Bronze. I see this comment here on Instagram kind of like sub quoting what people are saying. Why is Lucy Bronze starting? Like, yeah, this is why Lucy Bronze. She had a great game. Yeah, she didn't score, but she had assists and looking great. Someone goes, someone goes, I hope she can stay be consistent now, which, you know, which, yeah, definitely hope so. And then a lot of people talking about Chloe Kelly, absolute waste of the talent like Chloe Kelly. Then someone goes, in her own interest, it will be better if she leaves, finds a club and a manager manager who value her. And then, you know, City fans, incredibly poor performance tonight, too many chances missed. And then someone goes, Lucy Braun showcased leadership, experience, and resilience. She is a big game player and exactly showed why she is was signed to Chelsea. Her assist to Goro was pure perfection. Yeah. And this one goes, we completely dominated City. Yes, they had more of the ball, but in terms of chances and creation, we were far better than them. Imagine the second half. So, I mean, 
who's beating Chelsea? Are they going to win league? Now the question is, I think they're going to win league. It would be a miracle if Arsenal came back. City has a lot going on. You know, could they? But is Chelsea going to win? Uh, is Chelsea going to win Champions League? I mean, that, that's a question too. I mean, Chelsea's looking good. They're not looking unbeatable. Some people think they are, but it's kind of like... Who's going to beat Chelsea at this point, which is kind of hard to say. But hey, Arsenal, if Arsenal were to play Chelsea tomorrow, I would I would say Arsenal have a very, very good chance of beating Ch- Chelsea right now as it stands. Definitely better than with Jonas. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of like, are Arsenal too far in the hole to win league? Uh, it's going to be close because who who is going to beat Chelsea? What does everyone think? Questions, comments down below. I'm so sorry uh, to Gotham because they lost and I feel bad, but uh, that's what happens, you know? So what happens when you do it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Those PKs, I mean, I think I think uh, Jenna and McCall, not as much Esther because she went first, but maybe Jenna and McCall kind of say, hey, I shouldn't have gone the exact same place, you know? Yeah, just the pressure. I mean, when you're up there on the stage, yeah, I, oh. the pressure gets to you. Yeah, I think the pressure got, pressure got to them, and I think um, it showed. And being down a player, but hey, even though they were down the player, they didn't concede a goal, which I think is, I think that is very something to be proud of that you just didn't fall right, fall right then and there. Um, but now tomorrow, big game is going to be Kansas City or Orlando. I'm, to be honest, yes, I'm rooting for Orlando, but I would be so pumped if Kansas City won as well. So, questions, comments down below. What does everyone think? We'll talk to everyone later. Have a great day. Bye.